Good Sunday afternoon. This is TB at TB's cabin, uh, making up some poor boy stew, uh, poor boy uh, chili rather, homemade chili. I just put a little bit of deer, deer hamburger in there, and we'll have me some poor boy deer chili. And it's uh, when this gets done nice and thick, it ought to be good. But. Uh, what I wound up doing today, I wound up rotating my tires, checking out my brake shoes for uh, springs coming on. And, and uh, I had a little bit of vibration in the front end of my truck and on my four-wheel drive F-150. And uh, so I wondered what it was. I guess it was just a, a knot on one of my tires maybe. Uh, I don't know, but it was a little bit out of the line. Not bad, but what, what causes it to be out of the line is the upper uh, ball joint, uh, their seal bear, upper ball joint seal bearings, and the uh, seals have, have wore out, the bushings. So they can't hold no grease. Well, there's no way to grease them even. Even if you wanted to, there's no grease tips. They're just a seal bearing, the dad blame things are. So I don't like that on my truck either. Back in my day, you could at least grease them as long as that bushing was in there and you had that rubber bushing in there, you could fill it full of grease and that held grease in there to keep your, your steering, your, your ball joints cool. But now that they're sealed, if there's no grease in there and it gets hot, guess what? That ball joint will wear out finally because it's rubbing metal against metal. And uh, that's made to cost you money. It's done on purpose. So anyone watching this video, I'm just trying to teach you some things about our new cars. They are really fixing us good. Setting you up for cost. Car dealers and gasoline companies are all in cahoots, oil companies, to ruin us is what they've done. Back in the 70s, they, they didn't like it because our cars were lasting too long. We could fix them. These here, you can't. The only thing I can do is go buy a new ball joint and put it in there, a new, a new ball joint and seal, which is, it comes with one piece and you got to have, have a press to press it in. I don't think I can drive it in with a socket and a hammer like I did the old ones. And the old uh, ball joints I could drive in and put in, press in. But these here are made different, so I doubt I'll be able to drive them in. I'll probably have to take it to a mechanic that has the, uh, the proper equipment to press it in and no telling what that'll cost to get put in. Now they're not giving me no trouble yet but they will when they as they, they don't have any lubricant to keep that ball joint dry or uh, lubricated rather. It's going to get dry and metal again metal will wear out without any slickum in there. You ain't got nothing to keep that lets it uh, you know, uh, slip or cool. You got so that metal's gonna get hot, guiding it and wear, wear and tear on it. So that ball joint will eventually come out of there. Both sides, right and left, upper A arm ball joints are out. The lower ones are okay. Tie rods look pretty good, but that's what's causing my tire to lean just a little bit out because they they're not straight up and down. I mean, you know, they, they're not level. The bushing without fluid in it. When it don't have that fluid in there, in that bushing, uh, the grease I'm talking about, your your bearing grease, uh, that will let that bearing that bearing get hot. It ain't a bearing; it's a but it's a ball joint, and it's metal again metal in there that's pressed in there. And when it don't have no grease to cool it down or to make it slide easy, you're gonna wear it out, kind of like bone again bone, like my knees are. They're just bone against bone. There's no lubricant. So eventually it'll wear out. I mean, it's there's nothing I can do, so I'm just going to wait until it gets worse, until the, the ball joint loosens up. I'll have to check it every so often to make sure it ain't falling out of there so it don't kill me. But I'm smart enough that I check my bearings on a regular basis, everything. Brake shoes, bearings, tie rods, you name it. I was a front-end lineman specialist once. So I know what to do, and I can align them pretty close with nothing but a string and a level and a ground level running from the back tires because your two back tires are straight up and down. They're not going to go sideways. That's a straight axle if you have rear wheel drive it is. And the rear wheel drive trucks and cars, 
they are straight up and down. Now that modern stuff that has a tubing rear end and a lightweight crud, I don't know about that. Whether that's straight or not when you have front wheel drive. But rear wheel drive, you can take a string and put it down the middle of your hub on, on the back and put it to the front and have your wheels straight. Then you can put your uh, ground level on those uh, strings and it, I, it ain't an accurate, uh, ain't as accurate as having a machine and a laser sight just like, uh, to, uh, to, you know, to align it. But it's close enough that you won't ruin your tires. But if the tire toe end is out, it'll be out at the top. If, it's, if, the toe end, if the toe end is in, it'll lean in towards your motor, you know, in your car on the front ends. Now, what you've got to do is adjust them bearings till that thing's straight. But in my case, it won't do any good because the ball joint uh, bushings is out. So I'll have to get the bushings first before I can adjust the tie rods and all that stuff to align it even close. But with the ground level, and when you see that your string is level from hub to hub, from rear hub to front hub on each side, you take a string, tie it to a cement block or, some, or a stake or something in the ground at the back, but it's got to be straight down beside the, front, the back wheel to the front wheel. And that will let you know if you're aligned or not, because you can look right straight down from the back to the front and the front to the back, and look at that front tire, and if it's leaning in, then you're out of a line. If it's leaning out, you're out of a line. So then you've got to adjust your shims or whatever there is to adjust. If there is anything on this modern crap to adjust, and you adjust that uh, in or out, if you need to go in out, you got to put more shims in to straighten it up so that it will sit up and down level. So that the, your front A arm and your lower A arm and your your tie rod and everything straight up and down in. Because you what you want, you want your front wheel straight so that your tire rolls straight and wears even. If it's leaning in, it'll wear on the inside, and if it's leaning out, it'll wear on the outside. Either way, it'll ruin your tires. Uh, it'll lead them up too fast on one side or the other. Instead of a, instead of being able to do it, there's another way you can do it. If your out, if your toe ends out and it's the outside being eat up, just flip the tire over, uh, take it off the wheel, and air it up again. Patch it, put it back on there, air it up. But just flip the, take it off the casing if you don't care about the black wall being out, and then it'll eat on the outside of the other side to bring it down level for a while, and that works. Or you can just rotate them front to back, like I did today. A lot of people don't know that. Just a little tip on how to align the front end to get by with it for poor folks. Now it's not going to be as accurate as having a nice high dollar machine put on and paying a hundred and some dollars for a front end alignment. Because that's what you'll pay or more down at the front end alignment specialist and he'll tell you you need new tires and you got to get special tires for it to have an accurate alignment on the front end. In a way, he's probably right, in a way, he ain't. You, if you can't afford to do that, you do the best you can with the used tires you have. That's all I'm saying for a poor boy to survive. That's the way I do it now and get by. My back is just killing me now from wrestling them tires around because I have nerve damage in my back and it's, and it's just bad all over when you have to wrestle that stuff. But I can't afford to hire it all did, everything. There's some things I cannot do to that truck, and or any modern truck that is over an 80 model on up, because they have that electronic brain and electrical stuff. I do not fix electrical stuff. The only thing I'm any good at is front end alignment, brake shoes, rebuilding motors. I can rebuild the old type style gasoline motor with a carburetor on it. I don't know nothing about fuel injection much, I know when they work, they're a fine thing. When they go out, you got to go buy the injector and just replace it. That's it. The whole fuel injector has to be, be replaced. Now, earlier today, I saw a young man on YouTube. I don't know how true it is, but he took a, a gas line and bypassed his uh, fuel injector somehow, hooked into the engine, and it was running just on the fumes of the gas. Now, whether, the, whether that would uh, get you any more gas mileage or not, I don't know. Nothing about that. But I